Welcome to the Experts in Medicine talk series. This series is brought to you by Handbooks in Healthcare, leading publisher of clinical pocket references by the world leading medical experts. Today we are joined by Antonio Ansueto and Fernando Martinez, leading pulmonary experts and authors of Contemporary Diagnosis and Management of COPD. Uh, this is Antonio Ansueto. I'm professor of medicine at University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. I'm also a member of the Executive and Scientific Committee for the Global Initiative of COPD Goal. This booklet about the contemporary diagnosis and management of COPD will be a very unique opportunity for practitioners to get an overview of this uh, disease. Uh, what is hot in COPD today is first is a better understanding the, of the disease. We understand better the epidemiology, the risk factors, and also the consequences of give inappropriate therapy. We now recognize that the use of short-acting bronchodilators are not enough to prevent the progression of declining lung function or prevent excess, uh, complications such as exacerbations. With the introduction of long-acting bronchodilators, we have now been able to demonstrate that these patients will have a decline in their lung, uh, an impermanent decline in the lung function, a significant decrease in the number of exacerbations, and an improvement in quality of life and maybe in survival. So what is hot in, in, in COPD is the fact that there are many new medications in the process to be approved or have been approved for the management of this disease. We have first the lone active anticholinergics, then we have with theotropium, then we have lone active beta to agonists with formoterol and salmiterol, and now we have in a combination of therapies with inhaled corticosteroids and lone active beta to agonists, including uh, recently the approval by the FDA of Simbicor, that is a combination of formoterol and budesonide. Another important issue is the fact that we're all looking at this disease difference. Over the years, the Federal Drug Administration will only approve the use of these medications on the basis of improvement in lung function. Until recently, it granted the approval and the indication for the treatment of COPD as means of reduction of uh, the more important uh, sequela or side effects of the disease that are exacerbations. So now they are approved by the FDA and the use of alonactin beta to agonists in combination with inhaled corticosteroids can significantly reduce the frequency of exacerbations. Therefore, these medications are not only approved for improvement in lung function, but also approved to decrease the frequency of exacerbations. What we're going to look at is what is coming in the future is the further availability of medications that will uh, show this consistent improvement and these changes in the way treatment of the disease has uh, changed. So uh, when I think about this uh, handbook, uh, this will be a valuable resource for any healthcare provider that deals with patients who have had, in, had smoke or had any, com any com com comorbid condition from diabetes, hypertension to coronary artery disease because it's very likely that these patients can have a COPD. The fact that they don't have COPD is not that it is not present, is that they have not been diagnosed. So this handbook gives an overview of the disease, provides epidemiological uh, characteristics, an update in the pathophysiology, and more important, gives you an update in the available pharmacotherapy, taking into consideration the newly approved medications so, such as Symbicor, for moderate of um, budosena in a fixed combination, or the approval of new indications for the treatment of the disease, there is an approval by fluticasone, salmiter, or advir as an in the indication of reduction of exacerbations. I hope this uh, will be a useful tool for your practice and, more important, to help you in the care of this patient. 
Yeah, so Antonio, I totally agree with you. I think that uh, there has been uh, a lot of movement in the COPD field just in the last year or two, and there's going to be some uh, uh, impressive new work that will be coming in the next several months. And I think that uh, there's been a much better understanding of a lot of the biological principles uh, underlying COPD. I think those are evolving rapidly in this field. Uh, there are a series of therapeutic interventions uh, with large randomized trials that have recently read out, uh, and that uh, really has been most pronounced in the area of the long-acting bronchodilators and inhaled steroids and their combination. And I think there are a series of compounds that have been able to, uh, to achieve really impressive results that have led to um, important indications both in the U.S. Uh, and in the European Union. And I think that that's made us a very, a very mobile, rapidly changing field. Over the next uh, few months to a year, uh, this will be uh, even more impressive. And Tony mentioned the Uplift study, which I think is going to be a sentinel trial that will hopefully define a natural history uh, modification based uh, on a very straightforward uh, therapeutic regimen. Uh, there are also uh, several large studies of the PD-4 inhibitors that will be reading out in the next few months. And I think those may provide a novel insight in terms of uh, a new approach to an anti-inflammatory approach. And then there are a whole series of, of studies with novel targets that are in the process of, for which data will become available in the next few months, which are also should be quite interesting. And I think that from my point of view, the, this, this handbook is, that, that Tony initially drove uh, has provided an opportunity for both of us to really make, keep this very, very up to date. Uh, and all of the recent studies are included. The, the, in fact, all of the chapters have been revised to include uh, uh, novel ther data, whether it's biological processes or some of the therapeutic data, uh, and it is really a very succinct book with a lot of, uh, of tables that really is about as up-to-date as you can get. Uh, in contrast to most textbooks, one of the advantages to these handbooks is that they're, they've been updated on a regular basis. Uh, and as such, they are really, really up-to-date at this point. And so I think that's, that's one of the advantages for the, the practicing individual is the ability to look at something very succinctly put, but is also very, very up-to-date. Thanks for tuning in to the Experts in Medicine talk series. Brought to you by Handbooks and Healthcare. If you are interested in purchasing copies of this or any other titles by Handbooks and Healthcare, please call 800 860 9544 or email custserve at hhcbooks.com. All Handbooks and Healthcare titles retail for under $25 a copy and can be purchased in bulk quantities at substantial discounts. Handbooks in Healthcare can be found on the web at www.hhcbooks.com.